Shalom. All praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Kakudash. Double honors unto the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone that rule well through the scriptures. Peace to the 144,000 and the rest of the whole elect. This is basically a response video to um, the video we did earlier with Apostle Ricard down here in um, GMS Indianapolis, the Indiana branch. You know, we was just, you know, kicking it. Um, you know, due to brother's schedules, this probably one of the few times we all gonna be able to meet up before the apostle leaves. So we was all just kicking it. And uh, of course, you know, having a spiritual conversation, we end up uh, just get to talking. And then the apostle Kai said, look, you know what? We need to, you know, put this on camera to edify other brothers. You know, because we was edifying ourselves. You know, brothers was giving, you know, different little opinions and different testimonies. And we was exhorting each other, you know, just having a, a conversation. And um, Satan was really messing with the feed. Like, it kept buffering. Couldn't really get it out. You know, we probably, in the 40-minute video, maybe about 10 to 15 of it is maybe buffering and just filler talk. Until it gets buffered, but you know, uh, hey, she eleven forty four. Yeah, still moved by the spirit to do a response to this, you know, because I want to do a video, and I got different topics to do videos. I got all type of topics, but you know, you can have a topic, but sometimes the spirit won't be on you uh, as heavy to do the topic at it. You know, might be at various points. But I feel like the spirit is heavy on me to uh, do a response to, you know, that lesson we had just done. So I don't remember what the apostle entitled it. I don't even think he had a title, but, you know, I think the title of this lesson would be to brothers who are uh, upset about their childhood, you know, or something along those lines. Because, you know. A lot of brothers, you know, ain't have the best childhoods. And then you can sometimes still have a problem with it, still wear it, take it with you. As in the world say, right, you have a chip on your shoulder because of it, you know. And speaking from experience, man, you, you know, you you might say like, well, if my if I had a father in my life or if my father raised me, then I would be like this or I would be like that. Or if I had a a mother who raised me, then I would be like that or whatever, whatever the situation may be. But the thing is this, all things are in the hands of the most high. Yeah, how about you? I was shot. All right. And as a whole nation, we all are under those curses. All right. And uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, when it speaks, it says, if you listen to me, then you'll be blessed. And if you don't listen, you'll be cursed. All right. So as the curses follow our nation, then there's um, residual effects when it comes to other necessities of life. All right. Your father was under the curses. Your mother is under the curses. I say it was for father, but I, I mean is. They both under the curses. So you got people who under the curses having children under the curses, right? Deuteronomy 28 chapter, it says, bless, it says, uh, curse shalt thou be when thou goest in and comest out. So when you come into the world, you cursed. So your mother and your father, they live the cursed childhood. And whatever residual effects that happen to them through your grandparents, all right, so you can't hold too much charge to why uh, your mother and father wasn't this or that because ultimately you you'll be holding the most high charge because he's in control of all things. All right, you should just be happy and grateful, or learn to be happy and grateful that through all the bullshit that you went through, the Lord decided to choose you to give the truth to. So. Let me grab this scripture. Uh, it's also in Job. All right. Uh, 
I want to say four and seventeen. Let me let me see real quick. Is it four and seventeen? Yeah, this is uh Job four and seventeen. Shall mortal man be more just than the most high? Because in your in your understanding, you'll think something is unfair. And from your perspective, it may be. You know, there's a there's three sides to every story, right? Yours, mine's, and the truth. Well, the truth resides with the most high. The truth of the matter is that that look, the Lord created all things for himself. Even the wicked for the day of evil. So he created everything that it have the purpose as it pleased him. All right. This is his story. He write it as he wants. All right. But even within that, look, Baruch 4 and 4. Happy I will, Israel, for the things pleasing unto the Most High are made known unto us. And even more so, the elect, because the elect are oblivious to what's pleasing to the Most High. Willfully ignorant. So even out of all of that, what is that? Uh, First Peter 2 and 9, we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light that we should get. Uh, I'll grab that real quick. I think it's First Peter 2 and 9. First Peter or Second Peter. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, Right. A royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. So the, the Israel, right? The Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, we're the Lord's people. And the hopeful elect is that chosen seed, that chosen generation. All right. It says that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So look, the more messed up your story is. OK, the greater the glory be to the Yahweh by Shimei Shai that you was delivered out of that. All right. Because everybody likes what? Everybody likes that underdog story. Right. And the more epic and tragic the underdog story is, the more powerful it is. All right. So when you overcome those, you know, those things. Look, the scripture says, uh. What we we overcame the beast. Let me see. Spelling words, bro. Let me see. It's Revelation twelve and ten. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation. Oh, let me hold on real quick. Let me put my damn Besides my notification for shit. Okay. It says, uh, and I heard a voice, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his anointing, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. And Esau Edom, the so called white man, he is the accuser of our brethren, okay? He constantly uses his media to paint us in a negative light. All right. He constantly tries to show the world and the most high that we are we're not fit to be his people. All right. The whole world with all the wickedness and the evil that he commit and that he facilitate the bulk of the world. Look at us like we're the worst things since roaches. Right. That's based off of his doing. All right. See, we are under the curses, but the most high uses Esau Edom to facilitate those curses okay you got uh, uh the broken homes which the which the bible speaks about the broken homes the father would leave the the wife of his bosom and his eye would be evil towards her and he would leave his child and our eye would be evil towards each other with the so-called you know the quote unquote black on black crime but a lot of institutions Institutional racism and a lot of of Esau Edom actually studying our people and trying to break our people mentally uh, and emotionally and spiritually was how a lot of these curses came to fruition. Because prior to the, you know, in the 50s, 40s and 30s, our people wasn't 
criminals. We didn't make up the uh, the 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 bulk of the criminal justice system. Esau Eden was the bulk of it. We went into weirdo sexual practices. We went into those type of things, but through Esau's uh, wicked sciences of, of 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 studying how to destroy us, it manifested a lot of those curses. And then here he is. He throwing his rock, hiding his hand, and pointing a finger. When it's all, it's, it's his fault, but it's, everything is the Lord's doing, though. Right? The scripture says what? The deceived and the deceiver are his. All right? The, the scripture says what? The Lord ruleth in the kingdom of men in Daniel. Right? I think it's the second chapter. All right? Uh, 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 Sirach 18 it says he governed the world in the palm of his hand. The word govern means control. All right. It says. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So that's how we get victory over this. This prison we call life. This lowly existence we call life. All right. This is the beast, which is the system that's in place right now under Esau Edom, under the, the, the power structure that he used to rule the earth. All right. Where you, you, you're, at a, you're at a suppressed living condition. That's why Yahweh Shad said, uh, 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 I come to give them life uh, everlasting or evermore or something like that. I, 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 the quote is escaping me uh, right now in the scriptures. He said, I'll come that they may live and live more abundantly, something like that effect, something to that effect, because this is a this is a lowly existence. Here it is as a man. You ain't even at the proper testosterone levels. Your testosterone levels are supposed to be, you know, off the chart. And the average man, uh, especially in America, is well below average of what if testosterone levels to be. And that's just one example. Let's not get to the nutrition Let's not, you know, dealing with the proper order of the world. All right. The dynamic between men and women. The dynamic between uh, humanity and, and, and nature. All right. So and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Yahweh Shai's death and resurrection sealed the victory against the beast. All right. Against death. Against sin. And by the word of their testimony, the word of our testimony of us testifying against the beast. All right. And a lot of your hellish conditions, the things that the most High allowed you to go through helps uh, helps with your testimony. Because your testimony is your testimony. All right. It's, 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 it's Taylor, it's your spirit, it's, it's you. Ain't nobody, can't nobody have your testimony but you. Can't nobody walk in your shoes but you. It says, and they love not their lives unto death. And that's why the most I allow a lot of these uh, unfortunate situations to happen. Because look, he don't want you to love your life. He, he, don't, you know, he don't want you to get caught up. He helping you. And ultimately, you know, the scripture says, well, we are chastened now so we don't receive the greater condemnation with the world. So that little stuff that we be, uh, you know, we our little gripes, you know, little things we got issues with, you know, we actually got the comforter to comfort us through them. The Lord said, what? I will I will not leave you comforted, comfortless. So the comforter is. The truth, right? The understanding of these scriptures, because now you know the reason why all of these things happening. All right. When you read the wisdom of Solomon, it says fear is nothing but the betrayal of the succors that reason offereth something like that. That's why when even in second, you know, in this world, they say the greatest fear is the fear of the unknown. See, these people are going to be hella through. They don't know what the fuck is going on. That's why the scripture says, at that time shall men hope 
but nothing obtained. They don't know, they don't, you know, they shall look out and there shall be only utter darkness. That's another scripture. They're going to be looking for light and it's just going to be straight darkness for them. Wisdom of Solomon 17, 12. For fear is nothing else but a betraying. Betraying is what? When you got faith in something and it and it fails you, right? Of the succors which reason offereth. A succor is basically uh, a comfort. So what offers you comfort? Your reason, your understanding. So the understanding of this truth gives us comfort, all right? And understanding the, 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 the bad situations we've been in, why the Lord allowed it to happen, and the bad situations that are coming. Uh, what's that? Jeremiah 30 and 7 it said, it's going to be a time like no other that the world has never seen. Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. That chosen elect shall be saved out of it. Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. So what? This truth, what? Is going to comfort you. All right? It's going to offer you that succor, that, that stability. All right? At what times? In these evil times. So it says, let me see. I was going to get another scripture, but you know what? I think the, through the spirit, the point is made. Uh, let me see. Second Ezra 14 and 12. And there remaineth, no, verse 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Basically, get yourself straight. And then you could correct and teach others, right? Can't, the Lord don't like a hypocrite. Comfort such of them as be in trouble, right? And that's what we was doing. We was exhorting each other. You know, we was bringing light and understanding the situations, all right? And how do you comfort people that be in trouble? The average person don't even know they're in trouble. They, got, they think they got their whole life ahead of them. But then there's other people who... The Lord allows to be broken and to recognize they broken. And so that's when the his prophets are there to, you know, uh, mend them, so to speak. All right. Like how I said, uh, 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 heal the sick, give sight to the, uh, the blind, you know, feed, uh, feed the poor. That's what we do when we break down the, prop the, the scriptures, because that's what what heals. All right. That's what comforts. It says what? It wasn't mollifying uh, ointment, O Lord, but it was thy word that healeth all things. All right? Because when your spirit broken, you're done. Yeah, you, you, can, you, can, you can have an ailment. All right? But the scripture says what the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities, uh, roughly paraphrasing. You got a strong spirit, man, you could deal with anything. You know, and that's what strengthens your spirit. The word of the Lord. It says. Uh, and reprove thy people, comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. Yeah, renounce corruption, you know. Wickedness, let go from the mortal thoughts. Right. Because that's a that's a, you know, that's of the flesh, man. Yeah, it bother you, but. You got to let it go. Hell, you, what? You got the comforter. So shit, that's the ultimate therapy. That's the ultimate therapy. That's the ultimate psychology. The ultimate psychiatry. All right. You just got to trust the pro process. It used to be this show on Netflix called The 3%. It's like a dystopian world. They would say, that was a phrase. They would say, trust the process. Well, according you know, to the truth, you got to trust the process, man. All right. It says, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature, because as a man, you know, they got a, a phrase, men suffer in silence. Right. But basically, you just deal with it. You think on it. You may reflect. Hell, it might be it, oftentimes it's something to take away. And then you can also uh, strengthen another brother. Because a lot of times, brothers just think that they just been through the worst shit. It's somebody that's been through something worse. I guarantee it. 
I used to have my little situation where I felt like, well, this was unfair. Why me? And I ain't that bad of a person. Why the most I allow this to happen to me in the world, you know? And then you you hear stories about other people, what they went through with their parents. It was a, a guy from my neighborhood. He was older than me, you know, not not 10 years older than me, but old enough to be like, you know, he's about maybe like six, seven years older than me. And I, I heard a story that his mother used to actually sell him when he was a boy, seven, eight years old. If you if you know what I mean, read between the lines. All right. For 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 drugs. All right. Now, the average person who be griping and complaining, you, you ain't been through nothing fucking worse than that. So I used to sometimes I used to reflect. I used to be like, damn. Let me shut my ass up. Let me let me let me shut the fuck up complaining. Cuz that happens, man. Things like that ha- and even worse things if you can imagine it. But the Lord shields us oftentimes from those great horrific things and then he allows he allows us to go through what we go through. Okay? Because hell, hell the son his his son went through the Come on, man. All the scripture says uh 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 the servant is not above his master. All right? So his son went through shit. It says, uh, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Yeah, because those things could get heavy. And when something is heavy, what does it do? It weighs you down. It holds you back. All right? It's a crutch. It's a crutch. It's a cast. Here it is. Your leg healed. The, the fucking leg is healed, but you still got the fucking cast on. The cast is heavy. The cast is weighing you down. Take the damn cast off and realize that your, your leg is healed. You don't need it anymore. Just making an analogy that the comforter is the healer. But you just gotta, you know, allow it to comfort you, shit, and understand that. Look, man, this other shit to be worried about. Like, like the scripture said right here, it says, "Set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee." So that's not to say that they're gonna thoroughly, a hundred percent, go away. But the scripture says, "Set it aside. Don't let it take first, second, third place within your mind. Let put that shit in the back somewhere." Cause what good? What what good is it gonna do? It ain't gonna do nothing, nothing good. It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times, for yet greater evils than these which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So it's gonna get worse. In, oh oh, you think you've been through some shit before? Oh, you think not having a, a, a daddy or a mama was? You know, but uh, the scripture says uh, the Lord will love you more uh, than your mother do. All right. Let me grab that real quick. Let me see. This is Sirach 4 and 10. It says, be as a father unto the fatherless and instead of and instead of a husband unto their mother so shalt thou be as the son of the most high and he shall love thee more than thy mother doeth right and the fatherless are those without this truth man without this knowledge all right because when you ain't got a father you just you just uh without guidance and this truth is the ultimate guidance so you got to guide people but you got to get your shit properly settled within yourself before you can properly guide like the more you get yourself right the the better you can guide that's why the uh the lord said uh get the beam out of thy eye then get the moat out of that brother eye a beam is a log and a moat is a twig so you know you you reproving somebody else for they small infraction here it is. You got a large ass infraction that's holding you back from properly uh, reproving. You know, and sometimes these things can be seen, and sometimes these things can be internal. You internalize it, and not realizing that, look, man, you you better off just letting the shit go. 
Look where you at now. You know? So, with that, Lord willing, this was edifying to the hopefully elect. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakudash, Shalom.